Although um, you may have never heard of it before, psychophysics is a well-established field of study uh, more than 150 years old, which makes psychophysics as one of the oldest area of psychological science that is still a highly active area of contemporary research. So psychophysics is a quantitative discipline uh, mapping psychology upon physics. So this is a field of science relating perceptual responses of an organism, uh, such as like a human or animal, to visual, auditory, tactile, or chemical stimuli um, categorized as physics. Sometimes it refers to the uh, collection of methodology to study sensation and perception in general, ranging from designs of experiments to analysis of data and formulating mathematical models. Many of the uh, classical techniques and theories of psychophysics uh, were formulated by these two founding figures in the field. Uh, the one on the left is Ernst Weber, who was a German physiologist who championed the first psychophysical law named after him. Inspired by Weber, uh, another contemporary German physicist, Gustav Fechner, on the right, first used the term psychophysics to describe the research relating physical stimuli to human cessation, sensation, and perception. He also developed the classical methods to measure the relationship between the two. According to a Fechnerian psycho psychophysical world, um, there are three components uh, that are related to each other. First, there are external stimuli being perceived uh, by the, um, the observer, uh, which is categorized as physics. So here the external stimulus is a ball reflecting the red color from the visible spectrum of light. Then the reflected light hits the eyes, then the light energy is converted to a neuronal signal internally, mediating the psychophysical relationship between the physics and psyche, which is the physiology, the physiology component. And the physiological response invokes the sensation of the stimuli and perceptual impression is made upon them by the psyche component. From this relationship, uh, Fechner thought that there are two ways to study the relationship between these three components, namely inner and outer psychophysics. The outer psychophysics um, deals with the relationship between a stimulus and perception, which is the uh, psychophysics as we know of today. On the other hand, the inner psychophysics deals with the relationship between the neural events and perception invoked by the physics. So Fechner himself realized that in his day, uh, he could only do what he called outer psychophysics because of the limited technology at his time. And Fechner anticipated a later science of inner psychophysics with the uh, technological advances. As he predicted, uh, technology has been advanced so fast that people can now practice inner psychophysics. Today, we can at least indirectly find a shared brain region or activity when they are going through the same perceptual experience. For example, we can use the state of art technology such as an fMRI functional uh, magnetic resonance imaging to correlate our perception to some brain activity without having to open up our, uh, open up our skull and stab electrodes into our head. Um, here the logic is to measure the brain activity when the patient is uh, shown a color patch to see what relationship there is to the perception of a specific color. So if we can find the common brain region or activity with respect to a specific, specific color across people, then we can be more confident in that relationship between the brain region and the perceptual experience. 
in fact, um, we can now directly measure the neural activity to literally open up the skull and stab electrodes into the brain like uh, in this picture. So this kind of recording has been uh, only allowed in the field of physiology and neuroscience using animals. However, this kind of technique is now also um, available to humans only for medical purposes. So in this picture, um, this monkey is connected to some, you know, prep where he actually had, um, you know, this. So in his brain, this multi-electrode array is implanted uh, by um, you know, surgery. And then you know, when you know, this monkey is looking at, at the screen to do a task, and his or her brain activity is uh, directly uh, recorded from this uh, electrodes. So combining both inner and outer psychophysics, um, psychophysics as Fekmer envisioned is a highly interdisciplinary field of study. However, um, in this part of the visual neuroscience, we will talk about the um, only the outer psychophysics, which is the, uh, the psychophysics in more classical and narrow sense. Historically, it has been a long tradition of physiology to identify the internal structures by breaking the system open and dissect it into smaller pieces. However, people soon realized that it might not be the best way to understand the system that way. In fact, it was also recognized that behaviors uh, displayed at the systems level may not be apparent at the level of individual components that make up the system. And moreover, it may be too complicated to describe the behavior displayed at the systems level by considering the individual components in isolation. In contrast, psychophysicists study the overall performance of a human visual system by examining the input-output relationship. In a sense, a psychophysical approach to visual perception is similar to a branch of science called system science. In this approach, people are more interested in what a system does than what it's made of. Engineers now realize that for such a complex system as visual system, simple summation of individual parts is not adequate to explain the function of the visual system as a whole. So the major goal of the system's analysis is to come up with a mathematical model of a system to predict an output when it is given a specific input. So from this line of thinking, psychophysical approaches may treat the visual system as a black box. So in a typical psychophysical experiment, a precisely controlled input is presented to the system and the output is measured from the subject's response. So from this input and output relationship, the functional characteristics of the system can be determined without much consideration of what's actually inside the visual system to process the input. With an appropriate and careful appraisal of the input and output, uh, the performance of human visual system can be understood with relatively straightforward mathematics and functionally plausible components. As an illustration, um, please take a look at this picture of fine gratings and see if you can resolve another image behind them. So you may have to move your head back and forth, left and right slowly to see it. If you somehow resolve the figure from the grating, um, then the information physically present, uh, present in the stimuli must have been retained or relayed through a series of anatomical or 
physiological causal chain of events leading to a conscious perceptual experience. If you didn't, then information must have been lost somewhere inside the system. So, as shown in this example, uh, in the absence of knowledge about the inner workings of the box, uh, system properties of vision puts fundamental constraints on models of how it works.